Hi everyone, welcome to the IBFS core implementation on Monday, 2020. I am Aiken Brain, I will be your host. We are going to go through the high priority initiatives, other initiatives, blockers and asks, parking lot design review proposals, and all that good stuff. So, kicking off, upcoming and ship releases. Are there any? So, uh, Going to the best, uh, ODOT 7 did not get out last week, but it is almost there. I know, I know. Um, actually, I mean, all of the, all the release stuff, uh, all of like the, the things that we needed to investigate all sort of turned out fine. Um, just need to actually go through the process of doing the release. Um, if Apelians was on the call, I was going to ask him to look at the Orbit DB tests, but Oh well, the time has come and gone. So off to the release we go. Um and that should be that should be coming out quite soon. Back itself and uh kicked off uh, um support in JS uh HTTP client uh which will be using new pin remote commands from Work in progress, pull request in Go IPFS. Uh, I think we need to like wire up config and figure it out uh, the way a config uh, will be up, like updated, like how we add and uh, remove uh, pinning services. Uh, if it will be possible to like modify like specific one, given the way that's just like an array of uh, objects in the config. Maybe we need a dedicated command like we have for bootstrappers, or maybe not something we need to discuss. Yeah, but that's about it on my end. Yeah, I think so. We have, uh, has anyone reached out to Matt about regenerating the code on his end with the newest specs? I did not hear from him, but uh, I mean, like before I tagged the release, I asked if uh, he's fine with changes, and then uh, after okay. I tagged the release, I notified uh, implementers, uh, including uh, Pinata. So I think it's fine. Uh, okay. It's just like a matter of time. OK, because so we need to still regenerate the code so that you can test against the Andrews test server. Um, I think that the we're going to probably need a dedicated command, is my guess, because uh, Basically, because the secure because the API keys are effectively as sensitive as symmetric keys, um, you need to guarantee they're not getting sent to the wrong place, and so changing the name is an attack vector where the name where the the key gets sent to the wrong place. So, if you wish that they were asymmetric keys, you can take it up with the people who don't want them to be asymmetric keys right now. Looks like someone with a, with a red flag. Red flag in in what way? That like that they that we're using symmetric style like keys and tokens. Yeah, like if it's so trivial to to attack them. Like that. Yeah, well, it just means like if I rename you know your pinning service from Alex, you know. Alex's pinning service and to Alex's pinning service backup, and then I make a new one and call it Alex's pinning service, right? Um, like I, I can like I can like change the names around so that when you're sending to me, you're actually sending me like a different key um, than you meant to. So we'll just have to make that not a thing that you can do. It's it's fine. Yeah. Um, so, hang on, ED2551 default keys. I think those are all, I think all that stuff is is done. I think most of these issues are like, or some of these are, are about, are resolved in the GoIPFS release. So, when the release goes out, these will be done. Super good. Uh,
Yeah, big thing there. Um, that I'll all go out with the ODOT 7 release. And then on the JSI PFS side of thing, I opened up a PR today uh, to remove that everywhere. Um, so that can just go out whenever we do the uh, next minor release. OK, yeah, I spot that. I'm just wondering when the initial release, because it's going to obviously pull up the drawbridge for older versions. Yeah, we'll also need to roll out the announcement of like when the infra, like, this is, this is, you know, your last, whenever it is like, this is your last info week. <laughs> so just let, you know, on all the social medias, let people know that if you are running go IPFS 0.2, like this is the last time anyone else will be able to talk to you. Uh, Definitely some messaging around that. <laughs> Um, she was no rust update this week. Uh, so yeah, so JS improves the scalability and connectivity. Yeah, I, uh, so the after LA is still in progress. The initial implementation got merged last week in the 0 0.30 branch, which is a branch for the JS p 2 p feature release. Uh, the milestones 2 and 3 are uh, ready for review, and Jacob will review them this week. They include the network update to inform the other peers using an identify push, push that uh, we have now a new listening address that uh, people could use to reach to us. And uh, I also needed to update the self-signed peer records to uh, being basically recreated with the new address. Uh, and uh, the third milestone, uh, basically, when uh, we don't uh, have uh, in, enough uh, Remo uh, relays to listen on. According to our user configured the LibP2P, we can uh, try to find them on the on the network using by now LibP2P content routing. So in IPFS, uh, people would uh, basically use the delegates, as we still don't have the the DHT enabled by default. But uh, uh, I plan to also over the next weeks follow up this with the uh, rendezvous integration, and with this, the plan is to basically have the lp2p.discovery API. And uh, basically, we would uh, go through rendezvous to find it through the uh, delegates in the future through the DHT. And the goal is to find uh, remote relays and other services uh, that we will eventually need. Uh, yeah, and uh, basically, the last step for, for the auto relay part it's to uh, don't, do, don't uh, announce the private addresses, which is a, a problem that we already have. And uh, usually we have people uh, creating issues saying that we have warnings, for example, in the browser saying that we are trying to dial to uh, local addresses in the browser, uh, which it's basically because other peers are advertising them as uh, listening addresses that people should be able to dial, which is not the case. So basically we'll need to, now that we have the auto relay to get rid of this issue. Yeah, and uh, finally, regarding the connection manager overall, uh, I started uh, last week by creating a document with the baseline uh, for discoverability and connectivity for each uh, environment and uh, use cases. Not all, but uh, basically a start in the goal here is basically to understand what are uh, the important connections for a peer uh, in each use case and environment. And with that, uh, try to find strategies uh, for a more intelligent connection manager in JS, where basically we need to understand, for example, uh, the auto relay connections that we are bind to, it's really important that we cannot uh, disconnect that peer. And we need to find all these peers, for example, the peers that we share topics uh, of PubSub and to protect all these connections automatically. And yeah, basically find this kind of strategies. And yeah, that's it. We're going to want to improve on um, uh, look. So something that's not implemented in JS yet is uh, sessions in Bitswap. Um, so I think it would be, I guess we end up treating it similar to um, like pubs or peers, because you have like groups of peers that you want to have like new Bitswap. Yeah, uh, yeah, one of the things that I'm considering in uh, this baseline is the application level uh, protocols that use the uh, multi-codec topology and BitSwap would be in that category. Cool. I'm, uh, we are still uh, aligning like 
uh, how involved GSWP would be in the core side if it would basically be intelligent enough to just protect everything or if we should guide people on uh, uh, who build protocols on how they should protect the peers. That's uh, some of the things that we need to polish while we implement it, I think. Yeah. Did you say that JS IPFS doesn't have sessions in BitSwap? Um, but I recommend that if and when you do implement sessions that you allow there to be some sort of context about how the query was made or like the evolution of the query. Um, one thing that we would like to do in Go is be able to figure out like more stuff about the graph as part of the session so that you could stop providing every single block and instead provide, you know, roots or files and directories or just logarithmically blocks down the tree every so often, right? Um, something that is not as much as just every block. Um, and in order to do that, we need more context about the query than just I'm asking for a block. Um, so we have the legacy of trying to like figure out how to plumb all these things through, but if you guys are starting from scratch, something to keep uh, under advisement. Yeah, the cool. yeah, there's also a uh, um, research. I invited several people here to it on Friday. Um, but if you're not on that, let me know and I'll add you um, to a, like a beyond BitSwap research discussion because um, the ResNet Lab team is working on beyond BitSwap. So what the future of the BitSwap or block swapping looks like. Um, so that's on Friday to just what's the state of that research? Where's the project going? Solicit feedback. Um, so this could be, uh, I don't know if that will be a full replacement or not for BitSwap um, or an amendment to that. Um, but that could be something that we we look at um, in lieu of going through the process of adding sessions to, to JS. Um, but we can see what the timeline looks like for that. Jacob, could you add me to that meeting too? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, that's uh, the end of the high priority initiatives. Uh, moving on to other initiatives. Um, so, subdomain gateway. Waiting for 0 0.7 to be released. Uh, no update for Unix. I'm doing it, I swear. <laughs> Type faster. Um, no, uh, not take the interest for 1.5 and go up if that's as far as I know. Dark service. Uh, I crossed it out. Uh, I'll take that off the list because I'm not spending much time on it. So once I'll actually start, then I'll put it back on the list. Um, so next one is also mine improving uh, web UI file, I think. So uh, a lot of stuff has already landed. Uh, last remaining piece that I'll be working on is actually doing the UI piece. So it will let you know how it's progressing. Um, I uh, also found out that maybe the progress handler was there. So all of the patches that I wrote for the update and download progress was not necessary. Um, so I think I might close those pull requests, but good news is we won't have the, we won't need the complexity. Um, the next one up is also mine, uh, which is uh, TypeScript uh, integration. Uh, so for IPFS, there's a pull request that is uh, waiting on Alex's review. I'm gonna do the update of that pull request, but the meat of it will be the same, uh, mostly to uh, propagate some changes that happen in the meantime. Um, so there's a pull request from Alex that uh, targets Azure uh, that was uh, introducing some type generation. So I'll be taking up that from Alex and changing it slightly. So it does more or less what I do in IPFS and maybe probably require IPFS to do the Azure thing. Um, it just generates types separate from the tree uh, and tells TypeScript what to look for them. Um, 
And then there's a older pull request from Hugo that uh, does a doc generation from the types. Uh, and I forgot exactly what few other things. So I'll be splitting up those into separate tasks uh, and land them one by one. Um, once we have a IPFS uh, type generation working, I'll probably go on and try to add the similar mechanism to other repos as well and take the learnings that we get from there. So except, expect pull requests there. Part of the reason is also like for IPFS to generate meaningful types, it should be able to understand the dependency it pulls in. So if lib P2P is not typed and none of the IPLD is typed, then it can't really make much sense of it. Um, yeah, so there's that. And just one thing, there are some people interested in uh, types in lib P2P as well. So uh, eventually it would be good that you sync with them and uh, we can you can collaborate. Yes, uh, I think some of the same people did some in its original pull requests to TypeScript as well, uh, to IPFS as well, with some types. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna try to leverage as much as I can of the community. And I'm aware of many people who are interested in that too. Cool, um, I wanted to add a couple of things into the other initiatives, so stuff I'm working on. Um, so one thing is, I'm trying to decompose uh, the IPFS module a little bit, so I'm split out the uh, CLI and the HTTP API server, um, and the, I mean, what is kind of the core. Um, the idea being that you can just require the core, and you don't have to like go through the installation of all the, the dependencies for the CLI and the, and the HTTP API, which you usually don't need, because um, that's kind of something that people complain about quite a lot. Um, and then, so that's kind of why I haven't got to the TypeScript stuff yet because I've been moving lots of files around. Um, but that's like nearly almost done. Uh, and then I went on an epic side quest um, to kind of bring NPM and IPFS up to date so that we could run the uh, Go IPFS 0.7, like the test against Go IPFS 0.7 with it, um, which entailed bringing the IPFS NPM registry mirror up to date because it shares a whole bunch of the code. Uh, which has been interesting um, as it shows that the SD data still does work at the moment uh, because it calls through into nodes and TP module which requires either buffers or strings to be sent and not even ARAs, which is mega tedious. Um, so anyway, so I'm fixing all that stuff up. Uh, I think I should get out of this one. Uh, and then I'll be able to get back into the modern the type of thing. Cool. Uh, that is it for the other initiatives. So, any desirable proposals? Any blockers or asks? One from the dean? Uh, no, I just, uh, there is, there is, uh, you know, someone poked at like one of the, the old Go IPFS issues for moving the pins into the data store. Um, I suspect we're going to be taking a similar approach to what you did in, in JS IPFS, but I think it might be worth, I don't know if it's going to be this, this week or next week would be better, but discussing um, how we want the pinning to look in light of some of the changes to, in light of the work Lytle has done on the pinning services API, in particular around like you know, named pins or having multiple pins that target the same CID and like what might be an appropriate way to manage all of that. Um, I don't think this week is going to be the time for that, but maybe next week. Uh, I, Juan had some thoughts, I think, where, at the pinning summit about that uh, with a pin object API and some textile threads were also involved, I think. So it might be worse pulling those in. I think there's like there's like the the short term data storage thing, um, and then there's like the long term just moving pinning completely over to threads. Um, but I think that is going to require a much much larger conversation. But is there something that we can do in that interim that gets like that pinning performance improvement for um, the the pinning 
services so that they can you know just improve performance on their systems until we get to the the thread thing or whatever that ends up, ends up being i suspect the big the big question is, will just be like for now will just be like what is the thing to be the primary key what is the correct thing is it like a cid or a name or some uuid um and then once you have that figuring out okay what do you want to do in the cases where you want to you wish the primary you know key was something else do you do we have a separate index or do we just like you could look up cost i suspect those are the 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 major issues to to explore because without getting too much into like oh hey what if we added like a whole new what if we replaced our one dag thing that didn't quite work out with like another dag thing that might not work out um okay. thanks for explaining um i have one thing that i want to mention uh so uh, in JS projects, we used to, or still use Azure to do the ES linting, but there was a problem that um, if you just uh, clone a project and start it, uh, VS Code and other tools would assume other formatting rules than what ES lint assumed because they look for uh, ES lint config, and if it's not there, then it, they just go with a generic thing, I think. Um, so we uh, there's a pull request for IPFS that I don't think has landed yet, uh, and pull and the thing in Azure landed, which is we have now shareable config for ESLint that Azure uses. Uh, so we could just add one liner to every repo saying that extends IPFS, and then all the tools would be aware of what the config should be like, and hopefully create a better experience. So I'll be adding some of that to other repos and would encourage others to help me with that too. And if somebody wants to help, please do. That sounds like a job for automation. Uh, maybe, is there some sort of, I guess, list for of repos? Yeah. I... So I have some code sitting around that looks through every repo in a a user or org and looks for a file and then sees if it matches the file that I have locally and then replaces it if it doesn't using my GitHub token. I use it to update all of the GitHub action workflows whenever there's a change because I have like 50 repos that all have the same workflow. Um, so if you want to borrow that code, it might be like a reasonable script to just go and change all of these. But it, it, it just overwrites the file. It doesn't like open a PR or anything. So I don't know if you want to be that aggressive. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, why don't you share the link with me and I'll look at it and see if I can do it, thanks. Oh, uh, another thing, um, Alex, so we did uh, publish the fork of a base Excel based on your pull request in uh, multi-formats uh, namespace or whatever the scope. Uh, uh, can should we update the JS IPFS? I think something was blocked on BaseX, right? Maybe we should use that fork there. Yeah, um, multi-base depended on BaseX. And I bit of um, that, um, didn't Volker just release it as a point release, so it should just arrive. Oh, oh it's already done. You mean, or uh, he released the uh, release that doesn't include that? Yeah, unless it depends on it direct, directly. But like, so, to, so the next release will pull it in to the browser bundle because um, it, you know, it builds a unified version. But we can always do a point release if it's, if it's like blocking things. Great, thanks. Cool. Uh, question? I shared the OKR sheet. So fill it out. Uh, we'll meet on Thursday to verify, but add all your thoughts, please. We're going to try to solidify that this week. Um, 
Mm -hmm. That's that then. Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, this has been my first confrontations with Sync for Monday, the 21st of September 2020. Please fill in your Sync updates. Uh, be safe. See you on the internet. Bye. Thanks.